You're listening to the UAE's number one talk radio station. This is the Business Breakfast on Dubai I 103.8. With Richard Dean, Brandy Scott and Tom Urquhart. Where we are taking stock a month on from the rain. and the girls at Espas about what we are seeing in terms of where people are renting and buying now, the questions today that they are asking real estate agents um, about the property they're looking to own or move into. But before that, we're going to have a look at what impact the rains had last month on actual property activity because we've got the man who's always got the numbers in the studio with us this morning. Sean Jahinki is the CEO of Property Monitor and the Director of Market Intelligence and Research at Cavendish Maxwell. We've got a sneak peek at their April report for the Dubai property market, which is very interesting indeed. Morning, Sean. Good morning, Brandy. I'm a little confused and I don't think I've ever said that to you before. You never have. So you start the report by saying that neither rain nor shine will stop the Dubai real estate market from delivering. And yet sales transactions were down around 15%, but still on a daily basis came in close to all-time highs. How does all of that fit together? <laughs> so you have to look at what April was, right? So we had Ramadan, right? Came to an end. We had an Eid break. Everything was closed for, for a week. So that slowed down transactions and it takes part of that. And then we had unprecedented storms that really also affected the transaction volume. So if we were to look at daily numbers, um, trustees offices were closed. So if you had a ready property transfer, a title deed, it couldn't happen during the, the e-break. Um, but developer sales could still go on. So there was zero title deed sales during that break. And then developer sales, because there was a self-registration system with the CUD, they kept going, but still down on numbers from the week before and, and, the, and the daily averages. Fast forward to the storms. Right? The day after the break for E, transaction volume spiked, right? making up for that lost ground of, of a week of businesses being closed. Then the rains happened. Right? Transaction volumes on that day went down a little bit, but not too much because people, I guess, in the morning, things were business as usual. Some people were caught off guard, maybe not thinking it was going to be as big of a storm, but they weren't as strong. The day after was basically nothing except off-plan trading. A couple of dozen title deeds, off-plan registration still happening there. And then you'd think the market might actually be affected a little bit more. They slowly went back up. The week after, pretty much had a, a, the second highest trading day for the year. Um, and since then, daily transaction volumes are pretty much above the yearly average. So as, a, as an effect on transactions happening, very little. But you have to remember, these transactions had contracts signed weeks, months before. So will it how we see this coming in the future months ahead? I, th I think when you have the guys from Espas later on, they'll give a really good indicator. What we're hearing from our partners on the ground is activity is still high. So more questions are being asked, but I don't really see this affecting trading volumes going forward. Okay, so let's look initially at the knock-on from April. As you say, it's you know very rare that someone goes and sees a house on Tuesday, buys it on Wednesday. You fill in the form F and then the banks get involved and the valuers get involved and, and, and all the rest of it. So when would you expect to see the, the physical impacts of the rain being shown in transaction numbers? Yeah, so in off plan, you won't. Right. Um, there were some launches planned during those days. One was moved online, some were pushed back, but you're not going to really see a change in that. Um, you might um, see a change in the way they develop and engineer projects going forward. Um, on title deed on ready property, you're probably looking at a turnaround time with no mortgage as, as quickly as two weeks. So let's say over the next month to two months, that's when we'll see it show up in the data if it's going to show up that there's any impact. Um, are people going to be looking at properties a little bit differently going forward? Right. It's always been location, location, location. Is it now going to switch to location, elevation and negotiation um, <laughs> based on this? Um, I don't think so. Maybe to a small extent. Apartments, probably not so much. Um, villas and townhouses, single family homes. You have to look where areas flooded. Before the show, you were talking about DIP and some still standing water sitting there. It's always had that historically. They'll put measures in place. Um, I live in ranches. There were a couple of areas in my community itself that were, that they got three feet foot of water, but 10 meters down the street, nothing. All right, so I think elevation, that topography will start to come into some considerations. Um, it does need to be factored. It is pretty much everywhere else in the world. You look at flood risk. You look at natural hazard risk and other stuff. We don't typically hear. 
Cool, let's break that down into to two different parts then. One being the developers. We're seeing a number of really big new master communities being launched at the moment. Are their engineering teams going to be looking at topography and, and, and drainage in a different way? I would be shocked if they weren't, um, especially in the Villa Townhouse communities. So you've got Ema with a couple, Jamak with one, Alda, you've got MAF, all launching really big master communities. The sand plots right now, they will be looking at topography there and putting things in place, looking at more of their engineering that goes into it, the infrastructure works. So maybe they're going to raise some ground levels. I guarantee you drainage is going to have a huge thing that they're going to be looking at. Um, so going forward with new projects, I think they're going to just have it under control. It'll be one more thing they're paying closer attention to. Historic projects, that's where it's going to be interesting what they can do and what impact that will have on the community. And it could, you see some, some implications on service fees because retrofitting, based basically an, an older community is going to cost money. Someone's going to have to pay for it. That falls back onto unit owners and, and the owners association at the end of the day. Service fees as they stand at the moment, will they have been tapped for some of the work that's done where, I don't know, generators or whatever had to be bring in, brought in? Yeah, so most buildings would have the operating costs covered and they have a reserve fund that's put away. So there's a, a small slice of what's being charged that goes there. That reserve fund will probably cover that. I don't think they're huge expenses. Um, insurance as well will cover a lot of the other things that are there, I'd assume. Um, don't just forget the, the single family communities. Think about the apartment buildings as well. Whilst you're not getting ground flooding, you might get some leaks in that, but if that building has any any major work that has to be done that's covered by insurance, you're probably going to see that building's premium go up. If it had uninsured stuff that's there, that's going to be paid for. Is there a big enough reserve fund? Um, I've always questioned this. Has a lot of planning been done ahead to go, right, do we have money to cover these unforeseen things? So I expect to see service charges across the board have some impact and it might start to reveal some buildings that maybe didn't have forward planning in place before now really be affected a tad bit more than others. What about at the buying point, home inspection reports? I mean, at the moment, Rich and I were saying earlier, valuations are just you know, looking at the floor plan, is this this apartment, tech, tech. It's the sales value of it. Could that change whether the banks demand more or the buyers themselves? I think you've hit the nail on the head with banks, right? So when we purchase a property here, when does evaluation happen? Most people, if they're not getting a mortgage, one never happens. No one says, I'll, I'll do that, pay the, the 3,000 dirhams plus to get one. They're not happening. If you get a mortgage, the bank requires a mortgage, evaluation. That valuation is going to there, basically making sure the property's there. Has it been up? things that sufficiently increase price. They'll look for, for defects, cracks and other things, but they're not getting up on the roof and checking the ACs or there's no crawl space to go into, but they're not doing that engineering side. Buy a house in the US and you're getting an appraisal done and you're getting a home inspection done that gets into the nitty gritty. Um, I think, I mean, if, if I were buying a villa or a townhouse right now, I would be looking for that next level to have that inspection just for my own peace of mind. Um, do I think it will come common practice here? Unless the banks mandate it, no. So it'll be up to the individual? It'll be up to the individual. And anyone buying it, it would just be a good idea to have it. Right? You want that peace of mind. And it may come into the negotiations. If you know, people have short memories here. Three years from now, people aren't going to remember the place that was four feet underwater. I would want to know going into that. And then if that's priced the same as one that wasn't affected by rain, I'd be factoring that into my negotiations. If it's a poor elevation, it's factoring into the negotiation. 20 seconds before we leave you, the fact that these numbers are still good, what does it say about the resilience of our market full stop? At this point, nothing can stop it. The demand shocks me every day how we're going for record launches, but they're being absorbed. Both markets are so buoyant and going strong. Ask me to call the bottom, the top. Couldn't do it anywhere near at this stage. It's going, going to the top. Jean Jahenke, CEO of Property Monitor, Director of Market Intelligence and Research at Cavendish Maxwell. Your ARN News.